Hey everyone, I'm Nate. And I'm Abby. And we are the RC Sailors. We are reviewing the Iron Track Spavo. These are our very first RCs. I'll go over the transmitter really quickly because there's not much to be said. This is your average, very bare bone, 2.4 gigahertz transmitter. It runs on four AA batteries, which is average. It doesn't seem to go through really, really quickly. It's got really basic trim and that's about it. That's or the transmitter. In reverse. Nothing shiny, um, but it's it works. and. That's really all we can say about that. So we'll move on. <laughs> Having said that, now you should know how we like to do our reviews. Uh, we don't really go on a point system. We just talk about some of the things that we like and dislike about the vehicles. Mm -hmm. um, these Iron Track Spathas, as you have probably already noticed, don't look like any Iron Track Spatha <laughs> you can buy. Uh, mine has quite the little paint job going on and I've torn it up. It's <laughs> These vehicles. Yours looks horrible. It does. <laughs> That's embarrassing. <laughs> These vehicles have more miles on them on our channel than any other vehicle. So if we're going to give a decent review on anything, it's this vehicle. <laughs> because we've <laughs> we've logged a lot of miles. Get that off the camera. Okay. Let's do more. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. All right. All right, Nathan's came in green. That I had the green and black. <laughs> Iron track. You can still I had see the it. red one. I had the red so one. So we got both of them. These are the brushed versions because there are brushless and brushed. Mm -hmm. The reason we got the brushed is because we wanted to start with something cheap. Right. These were our very first vehicles. And if you're looking to get into the hobby grade RC vehicles, these are not the ones to get. <laughs> These vehicles are so sad. They are, but when we had them, we thought they were the coolest thing ever. We didn't realize there were really good vehicles out there. So let's talk about some of the good things, and we'll talk about the many, many bad things that are the Iron Track Spat. And you all already know where this review is going. Yeah, but you know, we're, we're honest about it, yeah. and that's, that's the most important thing. We want you guys to know that we are honest about these reviews. Okay, so... Number one, I did like how the original bodies look. They were fine. They were sharp. Um, we'll probably put a link up in the screen You'll so y'all can yeah. see what it looked like originally. Um, but we just got bored one day and decided to uh, paint ours. Nathan started out black. Did the yes. video ever show yeah, up we got one, being black? Yeah, we got one video of it the black. <laughs> lost and then the he got bored one day <laughs> and this happened. And, <laughs> and then... I uh, went low around so happy on this one, so that's why it looks like that. Okay, moving on. So um, this is the that's the story behind the body. Body um, looks, body durability. Body durability is awful. I've got huge <laughs> holes in mine. I'll get some close-up shots. There are huge holes in mine. Giant dents and cracks. Uh, the body shell itself is awful it doesn't hold up to anything and the vehicles themselves are actually quite slow mine held up a lot better than yours all i have the very first time we ever took this out is that it just got it right in the back and that was all but other than that oh well i guess there is a spot over here on the side where the clips are supposed to go now these vehicles uh we should talk about the battery system because uh, these were the first vehicles we got we weren't really sure if we should go lipo or nickel metal hydride Lipo take a little bit more maintenance, Lipo batteries, nickel metal hydride do not. So we went with the brushed versions for the simplicity, saving a little bit of money, and they had nickel metal hydride batteries. Uh, they actually do okay. They hold up all right on batteries, but if you're going to get these, you should, without a doubt, get extra batteries because the one that comes with it is a bit of a joke. <laughs> now these vehicles, moving on from the actual body, these vehicles have uh, a bit of originality to them, and that's what makes them so cheap. The the brushed motor is just a just a can. I mean, it's it's no name brand motor, but it gets the job done. Mine actually has some. I guess you call the clip the clips or whatever it is in there. Oh. The spin. 
Um, mine has some that are actually bent. <laughs> yeah, if dust and things get in there, they'll snap and break. So it's just... not durable motor at all. No, uh, no, these are four wheel drive vehicles, which was kind of cool because um, if you watched our DES T210 review or any other review we have uh, with, with a two wheel drive vehicle, you can kind of get hung up pretty easily with just two wheel drive. These seem to do a pretty good job. Of oh listening. yeah. The grass, they go up hills all right. They we do. have it going through leaves, like thick, thick leaves yeah, in one did. of our videos. And yep. it did awesome. I mean, these vehicles are really fun to drive, mm -hmm. honestly. They are. They are kind of splash proof, but definitely not waterproof. <laughs> and that's why mine Tell always- Tell your story, baby. <laughs> we were recording in a creek bed uh, yeah, it's probably, it's gonna be up there on probably her side right there. In that creek bed, there are bodies of water still, even though it was dried up, and I thought it was uh, an empty hole I drove down into, and it was not. There was water there. And I thought it was gonna be fried completely, but it was just the ESC. Um, it turned out I just lost reverse, so I, it still drives really well. Um, but, but no reverse. No reverse. For him. For Mine him. still does. Yeah. So definitely not waterproof. Probably shouldn't even take these things through puddles. No. Uh, the steering servo, we haven't had any issues with the steering servo itself. No. Which I'm really surprised because a lot of people have issues with steering servos. We haven't had any issues with steering servos. But we've lost dog bones. These are designed really poorly. If they ramp, the tire is going to move upwards here mm -hmm. and when it does that it puts the dog bone in an awkward position and if it hits at the wrong angle with enough force it just pops the dog bone out super annoying and uh, it can get really really pricey and the reason why it's annoying nitro rcx never has parts for these vehicles. That's right. I like driving my Spatha even though it is kind of cheaply made. I enjoy driving it and I honestly miss driving mine because mine has been broken for 10 months. If we haven't even done this for 10 months. Mine yep. has been broken about two months, you know, two months after we got it. That's how long mine has been broken. And I miss driving it. So please, Nitro RCX, get the parts so we can drive our vehicles. That would be lovely. You generally get what you pay for when it comes to RC. Yeah. We're finding that out now, later into the game, and we're here to tell you guys so you don't go through the same mistakes. If you are just getting into this hobby and you want something that's just kind of a well-rounded vehicle and does it all, you can get this, but know that you should be kind of easy on it and don't take it through anything too rough because if you do break it, and it will break eventually, you're going to have an inevitably long, long wait on the parts and it's going to be kind of expensive. How much do we pay for these vehicles? The vehicles themselves, with extra batteries, with an extra battery each, we got two three thousands. It came with two each one came with its own two thousand milliamp, but then we got two three thousand milliamps. That's right. So that? both vehicles and two extra rechargeable batteries, nickel metal hydride, three thousand milliamps, uh, two hundred and sixty dollars. So I think that put it at about hundred and thirty each. And if you don't have the extra battery, it's probably just like one ten to one twenty, roughly. I mean that's that's maybe a little on the high end. So it's a good introductory price range. It's just not going to last. It's not made for long term at all, especially since you can't get parts. Oh, that makes me so mad. Yeah, yeah. The, the one thing about a hobby grade vehicle, when you take the step up from uh, an RC vehicle that you can buy at Walmart or that you can buy at Radio Shack or something, there's those little, uh, I don't know. Those With the little, huge antennas. <laughs> yeah, those, when, you, when you step up from those to the hobby grade level, the more expensive vehicles, you have to know that you are going to break apart eventually and you are going to lose something eventually. It's just inevitable. It's part of the system. You need to have spare parts around, be it a screw, a bolt, or a dog bone, which is a little uh, long piece of metal that goes from the drive shaft or to gears. the Or gears! Gears! Stripping That's what gears. what I need! Gears! <laughs> yeah, something's going to break and you're going to lose something. So it's nice to know that you can get the parts when you need them. I guarantee hobby stores will not carry uh, Iron Track mm, Spada parts. No. They'll have parts for uh, Team Durango. They'll have parts HPI, for Axial. Axial right. those, those bigger names. Not these. Getting spare parts is awful. These vehicles were 
good to start, but they've also given us more headaches than any of the other vehicles. Have we broken parts on other vehicles? We have, yes. And the beautiful thing is we can hop online, order the part, and, and it'll be here in a week or two. We can get parts for our other vehicles from the manufacturer's website from third and from third-party companies, you know, other hobby distributors. Mm -hmm. Their parts are everywhere. We found, you know, the original Nitro RCX sold these parts in some other company, I can't remember the name, but one of you all actually told us about. Right. And we still can't get the parts. It's just annoying. All right, so let's kind of, <clears throat> let's kind of wrap, wrap this up and rate it, I guess. We'll show you guys, uh, there should be some running videos throughout. You can see, we've had a lot of fun with them. We have more videos uh, on these vehicles just because we started with them. But uh, if you haven't figured it out already, would we recommend it for you guys? Would we recommend you to buy it? Is it worth your money? Okay. Well, I wouldn't, I would not buy this again. We As bought. I said, I mean, it was, it's fun to drive. It really is fun to drive, but there's probably something better. Definitely. There definitely is something better Looks. than this that's probably more bang for your buck. Oh yeah, sure. we have we have other vehicles on our channel that were only a little bit more expensive than these and have been way more fun and can do way more, way more durable. Parts are more readily available. So don't think that by going for a vehicle that's $30 or $50 cheaper than the other ones on the market that you're getting a good deal because you're not. You're either gonna pay tons and tons for shipping to get the parts mm -hmm. or you're not gonna be able to get the parts so it's a waste of money. That's right. So it's worth upgrading to maybe that you know, higher name brand than going with something that's super cheap because Definitely. it'll save you money in the long run, believe it or not. Definitely. So, uh, the RC sailors would definitely say no. No. We don't recommend this vehicle. Yeah, find something else. That's what we say. But we do want to thank you so much for watching. Every single time you guys watch our video, every time you click that thumbs up, or if you. Uh, bye. <laughs> We do want to thank you guys very much. Every time you watch our videos, every time you give us a thumbs up or leave a comment in the section below, and especially those of you that subscribe to our channel, you help us out so much. And we could not thank you more. Thank you. Let us know in the comments below what you guys think of the company that distributes this vehicle. Maybe we just had a rough experience with them. But let us know your honest opinions. Is it is it worth saving the few bucks to you guys? Would you rather save a few dollars and have a vehicle that runs and, and you can just drive around and have a little bit of fun with? Or would you rather pay the extra 50 bucks and get something that you know you're going to have for 10 years longer than this? Let us know what you think. We're still kind of new into this hobby, so we definitely want to hear from you guys. Please let us know. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching again. Bye.